this is the time for you to get involved because everything is right. wide open. Everything's wide open. It's now time to think about the heating and the cooling. So a decision was made this weekend. The homeowners have decided they want to have radiant on every floor in the entire building. Wow. They must have lived with it before. <laughs> they know. So once, you, once you have it, you can't go so back. So with radiant, we're going to put a system like this on most of the floors that has the plywood, aluminum on the back. The tubing goes in, and it'll just go back and forth back and forth this way. And this allows us to zone this building infinitely. We could have a little warm fire over here and another one here. And so every single floor can have multiple zones that we can really fine tune. Nice. All right. From a cooling standpoint, we have, uh, hey guys. So on the cooling standpoint, we're going to have a separate ducted cooling system. So the first floor is, again, it's wide open down below. So we can go conventional duct work. We don't have to go with our regular small duct that we often have to use. This goes into the basement and comes up through the That's first right, floor? That's right, through the first floor. We'll have an air handler, something like this. And I think we'll break this first floor up into two zones. So we'll come up with cool air into the duct work. And then there'll be a motorized damper on both sides so the air can go to one half of the building or to the other. Yeah. So that's pretty straightforward on the first floor. But as you go up in this building, it's a big building and there's a lot of different levels. Let me show you. All right, so up here on the second floor, on this side of the house is the kids' bedrooms right here. One here, one here. And that is generally a separate zone, typically. And this is the master suite right here. So, I mean, you could do it with a single air handler with, with zone dampers, but sadly, only about 4% of American homes have zone dampers. Conventional is to have a separate air handler with a condenser, another air handler with a condenser. So, Had so, we done it that way, we'd be up to three air handlers, right. three condensers right. at this point. But there's one more room on this second floor, this study, which is in this weird place where it wouldn't even invite ductwork to go to it. So that's now another potential zone. Potential and we, four. And we still got the third floor. All right, so up here on the third floor is another bedroom here. And then this they call the bonus room. And this really feels like it should be two zones as well, you know, at the top of the building. Yep. And as we go higher in the building, there's less and less space for ductwork. You know, we got some space up there, we could do it. So it, it suggests that we might look at some of these ductless or low, low amount of ducted air handlers. So this is a pancake air handler. Now this could sit, we could take two of these and put them right up here, one for this room, one for that room. We could take another two, put them down in the closets of the bed, master bed and the kids' bedroom, right? And so hardly any duct work, and you'd have micro zones inside the building. We also can think about this. You know that office that's in the back corner? That's, yeah. This is a picture frame unit, and that could sit on the wall, provide all the cooling we needed. You can change the picture to put anything you want in it. Love it. And there was one other exercise area I don't think you've even seen, we, we haven't shown yet, is down this way. And this could be perfect to go right on the wall to provide cooling and vent, uh, cool air for the exercise room. So we've got a lot of different options inside of how we can solve this problem. Correct. So historically, any time you had an indoor air handler, it always was connected to a dedicated condenser outside. So it was a one-to-one. -one. It was called unitary. So one indoor, one outdoor. So that meant if we attacked this building on all these levels, it would be what? Maybe four, five, or even six condensers outside. There's a better way. So conventional condensers also have a limitation of about 50 feet from the inside unit. So it's why they always get nestled right near the building. So imagine this, five or six condensers right there making that noise near the building. Not ideal. So I want you to meet an inverter heat pump condenser out here. So here's this one unit that will precisely change the refrigerant flow to the building. But what happens is, in this case, we take two lines right here with refrigerant and we run into this box. Now this box will be inside the building. If you look inside here, Oh, wow. And we can have more than one box. We have two off this unit. So you can see right here, a pair of refrigerant lines to each of the zones. This is up to four zones off this box. So two of them means we could have eight zones coming off of this single unit right here? Yeah, that's right. And so, so can this, does this have to sit near 50 feet towards the house? This could be up to 150 feet. So wow. it, it changes everything because it's also quiet. You can put it anywhere you want and make it go away. And eight zones is terrific. Right. So think about it. Good zoning in the old days for cooling would have been, hey, we would have been happy with one on each floor. Yeah, that'd be great. Right. But now we can microzone a building. And that's really the important concept to sort of have individual smaller zones within a building. So now on the top floor, we could have one on the sunny side. Another one on the non-sunny side. Okay, middle floor, we might end up with three. Mm. We might have three on the base, down the lower level, wow. including that exercise room. So now That's you awesome. put the perfect temperature all the time through here, perfect refrigerant temperature. It has a digital thermometer everywhere. Modulates this thing down, saves electricity. 
So you've got more zones inside, fewer pieces of equipment That's outside, right, right. and we're going to save a buck in the it process? Sales, less operating costs for sure. Absolutely. So next steps for you? We want to get the sizing of all the inside units exactly right. We do a load so we know exactly how big to put those units. You don't want to oversize. You want them to be just right. Hmm. Once we do that, put them in, run the line sets, run the wire. And here in the laundry, they're about to close the walls in, but I want to show you one really good practice. Now, we're going to have a gas-fired condensing boiler down in the basement to make some radiant heat on the first floor. Now, you could just vent that thing out through the sidewall, but when you do that, you're going to leave a big plume of exhaust coming out through the side of this beautiful building. I would prefer always to vent up and through the building. So here you can see the exhaust that's been run up through. It's going to go out through the roof. And this is an important material. This is polypropylene. This is a plastic that's designed to be used for the higher temperatures of a gas appliance. So I love that. And now we we'll also need fresh air to be burned in the boiler, so we're going to use the PVC to bring air back down to that combustion appliance. Really good practice. This building will have a series of what we call microzones, individual units that will provide cooling and second stage heating in different places of this building. We're in this office, which is this weird space which is away from the main part of the second floor, separated by a stair hall. So we decided to put a separate unit right here. Now we could have put a high sidewall unit that you've seen before, but this is actually a picture frame. So this picture frame, it can be changed to have any picture you want in it. And when you turn it on, this is going to provide all the heating and cooling in this space. When you turn it on, these side flaps would come on, this would tip down, and it would provide the heating and cooling in the building. Now in this case, we want to put it in during the rough end, but we wanted to make sure it's actually survived to the finish line. Only the Silver Brothers would build a custom cover that fit like a glove. Love these guys. So down here you can see the supplies that we need to get to each of our eight microzones. All we really need are these small refrigerant lines that are insulated and a condensate line. Instead of a big duct, we have to get these to the individual units. That's pretty good. And these have been tested. They're under full pressure, so we're safe to put the walls in. The other thing that I love is this. You see this? It's a cat piece of cast iron. Now right above us is that master bathroom and it has a toilet that when it's flushed, if this was regular PVC, you would hear it here in this living room. So this trans they transitioned it to cast iron to make it quiet. Good plumbing should be not seen and not heard. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.